Okay, everyone, hello. Uh, we have returned. Uh, if you recall before our break, uh, the group had uh, discovered a, a derelict river barge that was attacked by the same creatures that attacked them, uh, recovered uh, one of the passengers from a stone-like state into a flesh-like bag, and then uh, proceeded to do a little uh, search and not necessarily rescue a search and spaghettify in the woods uh, that rendered some sort of a black fleshy creature that was made with... Uh, hey, Willis! Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, that, uh, through some identification, rendered it as, well, a creature that was, uh, that was made from necromancy and of a variety from a, uh, a belief, uh, a power through Weejas herself. Uh, that is considered uh, sort of a radical branch off or like a, a fundamentalist where like this is the almost the anything goes school of necromancy um, where we just has given the powers to these people to do the things that it can do. And if you're given those powers by the goddess herself, why, why hold back? Why, you know, impose restrictions when your goddess herself is granting you these powers. Um, whereas we have a more orthodox style approach uh, that in Mesotopian terms is, is you know, very old world or old school. And then we have more of this like reformed uh, or like a, a Protestant version of necromancy through the denizens of Mesotopia uh, as they had come into that region through Mesomasca. So yes, this uh, this thing that you found was created through this uh, very uh, th this more necromancy cult. This is these are the same people that effectively had uh, um, been converting and making Lacuna into like their own nation state of undead. Um, but yeah, this is one of the things that was uh, peering and lurking around. Uh, now, of course, Norali, you encountered one of these before when you were hunting for the flesh tree. Uh, it, just simply because <laughs> as soon as you heard that first wretch of Mordecai, like that's, that's, that had to have been it. Right by a tree. <laughs> Plus that weird teleportation thing that happened again. Maybe it's a property of these creatures. There's no proof otherwise. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it seems like you found one. You caught it and it's, uh, it's a dead blob that is being poked at uh, by the professor. And, um, did you, did you want to scoop it up and take it with you? Or are you happy to leave it there after this magical identification? What would you like to do? Hmm. I mean, unless there's more that we can learn from it. Maybe. Mordecai asked hmm. the professor. <laughs> Is there more we could learn from it? I mean, yes, but it's a matter of access to facilities and resources versus the knowledge gained. Mm. Yeah, uh, might not be worth the effort. I think we've probably learned what there is to learn from it. Uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't know that I was able to find out specifically what kind of magic they used or. Like what kind of spells? I think it just kind of found out who, and that's good information to have. Uh, this is gonna be a weird question, but Maddie, yeah. is there any chance that I would be able to do some kind of intelligence check to do like a like a cost value analysis <laughs> on taking it with us versus not? Uh. <laughs> Leave it to the professor. To I, I don't. Things like I don't this. really want it. You should. Keep, if I you mean, take yeah, it, with you have to keep it in your If you don't care about luggage. the quality of life of anyone else, then you should absolutely take it with you because it's a valuable research specimen. It's uh, stinky. Yeah. But then again, science encounters. It's stinky. So who's gonna <laughs> <Yeah>. win? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. No, I think you could stay. Yeah. I agree. But uh, we will note that 
unknown necromancy magic used to create this dispellable question mark? Ooh. Mordecai writes notes in Selene's book. Well, learn is one of these. There may be more because you all remember from Green Shield, there was a bunch of creatures lurking out in the woods, and that's exactly where Norlai had it. In, well, and then Mordecai, you chased after, but you had encountered yeah. one of these, though you never saw it or caught it. But this one you did. So this yeah. this is one of these more recent folklore creatures that are lurking in the woods. I mean, if we want to go look for more, now that Norlai uh, has seen one, she could use a locate creature on it. If, if we want to go find more, but what will, we, what will we do with more? Do we want to try and keep catch one alive? I don't I don't know. I don't know what what, what more we would learn from it if it's alive, though. Well, we might be able to find out who created it. We know it speaks a language because I was able to pick it up with my brain scanner. Hmm. What did you pick up with your brain scanner? What, is it, what was it thinking about? I just was looking. It was just observing, but I wouldn't have been able to pick it up at all if it didn't know a language. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> hmm. That is very interesting, actually. Very interesting indeed. Well, if we want to detect more of these things tomorrow, I could certainly do that. Well, I think if we're going to do it, we should do it now while we're here. I don't know, maybe this is the only one in the area. Maybe we would find more of them in in town. I don't have it ready today, so I wouldn't be able to do that. Have what ready? Locating creatures. Oh, but Norlai has it. Doesn't I can mean? only detect the animals and plants. Oh. Okay. So if we wanted to go hunting for more of them, maybe we could do it tomorrow. <laughs> Well, I don't want to wait here overnight, and probably the captain, what's his name? I don't remember. It's okay, I don't either. <laughs> okay, probably the captain doesn't want to wait for overnight either. I mean, yeah, he, pretty... he was real nice about letting us investigate that ship, but he probably doesn't <laughs> want to camp here overnight. And I don't think Patty Lips wants to either, so we probably should get on the move then. Okay. Maddie, do we know enough about this to use locate creature on it? Mm. Maybe if you cast locate creature because you identified it, and so you okay. have kind of a magical like a a feeling or a connection. Uh, okay. Unless there's something about that spell that might be weirdly worded on the fence. Uh, I mean, it just says name a specific type of creature, so... Oh. A creature that's familiar to you, which usually means okay. in the D&D &D terms that you've seen it. Yeah, so I, I'd say bright if you did it. I would allow for it because you you have a, you have a lot stronger connection to these things. Okay. Um, the others might be able to, but you for sure would, would find a greater success because... You've identified it. It's bestowed the knowledge upon you. You've you've come into contact even through your pinky with it. Uh, I'm sorry, not your pinky. Uh, well, they're all pinkies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, they're all pinkies. That's true. Some people are all thumbs. So I, I, I guess. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you wanted to do that, then uh, I think that'd be fine. Okay. Well, we'll have to look into that next. Tomorrow. Next tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next tomorrow. <laughs> Which is Next just tomorrow. tomorrow. No, but but it could be like third tomorrow. Third tomorrow? Could be, yeah. It could be three days mm. from now. Another gnomism. Yeah. By the end of the campaign, you all will know gnomish. Uh, at least passable. <laughs> uh, she's been giving you an ongoing lesson uh, throughout the whole campaign. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> Just absorb it. It's it's normal to Mordecai at this point. <laughs> Absolutely normal. Uh, all right. So, uh, oh, so you're leaving the sample then, or you're collecting it in Liza? Uh, I'm happy no. to leave it behind. Leave it. Behind. Leaving it. Okay. You don't want it. <laughs> Get it away. Okay. It's stinky. We yes, yeah. We need to learn. 
Uh, okay, Gross. so you leave the you leave the the pile of uh, of uh, goopified flesh in the woods, and you return back. Um, the uh, pouty lips. Uh, what did you, uh, did you see? The, uh, what was the thing? Did you, did you find it? Uh, it wasn't a highwayman or a robber, was it? You're no, smelly. it's it smelled bad. Uh, so like a, a hermit living in the woods, perhaps. No. No. Like a small creature of some kind. No, small wooden creatures, of course. Uh, pervasive, especially this time of year. You can, you can hardly stumble without coming across a chipmunk or something. It's like if you took a skunk and stood it up on two legs and then set it on fire. <laughs> How horrendous. Very apt description. <laughs> Very vivid imagination that you have there, Norlai. Just, just it's not a bad description, it. though. It's really not, though. <laughs> it smells worse if you stand it up on two legs. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for taking care of that. Uh, I guess you've uh, uh, been the people you are, of course. Uh, I'll make sure to uh, pass along the word that you are uh, competent uh, bipedal skunk hunters. Yeah. Called the Chroma Company. The Chroma Company skunk hunters, yes, of course. <laughs> Traveling band of musicians as well as mercenaries. That's a very long title, but I'll see what I can do. Yes. <laughs> we do it all. We really do, though. <laughs> We're actually pretty new to skunk hunting. That's that's something we just picked up today. It's not really our primary thing. Do we do other <laughs> kind of monster hunting, though. Well, hopefully there's no more monsters along the way. Uh, I'll do my best to be as vigilant as I can aboard the uh, ship that you'll be kindly towing behind yours. Uh, uh, snacks, and of course, I'll look out over the railing and uh, some wine, and uh, uh, as you do. Uh, so yes, I'll, I will gladly uh, be the rear guard and uh, let you know if I see anything that uh, deserves seeing and uh, telling. Fantastic. Great. All right, so the one barge hooks up to the next. Uh, Pouty is happy to uh, occupy uh, the entire uh, trading barge by himself. He does, in fact, come back up on deck with a uh, ch cheese, comma, chunk of, perhaps even a meat, comma, hunk of, and uh, wine, comma, cup of. Uh, <laughs> as you find in Chapter 5, equipment. Um, so he enjoys these things. Uh, and is keeping a. I mean, he's at least like looking back and forth uh, at the banks, kind of looking down, uh, down into the water. But everything is fine. Uh, no, nothing more than an, an odd ripple in the waters. Uh, and you continue to uh, float down the river. At some point now, we're gonna say. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, whoop. Okay. Well, I guess uh, one hour later. The weather begins to turn. Am I going to have to stay up all night again? Uh, eh, th th it becomes mild. It's getting colder because uh, it is getting colder because uh, it, the sun is going down. But uh, it the weather isn't worsening. Though you are starting to notice some frost forming on the... Uh, on the leaves and the the banks, uh, like the the grasses and, and whatnot, and even aboard some of the the wet parts of the deck, uh, there's a, a frost or an ice forming as the temperature is dipping into freezing tonight. Uh, but it is rather clear; uh, it's partly cloudy. Um, and we continue down, down, down. Okay. Okay, you pass by uh, several other boats, um, and also uh, there is another uh, set of loggers that are uh, coercing logs down the river to Old Port. Um, it does seem to be that there have been other attacks on other ships. As you pass by, uh, it now almost seems commonplace to shout, you know, watch out for the eels. Um, 
and there was uh, there was something else you don't get a solid description of, but someone said they saw something big in the water. Uh, Might have been a big fish. It didn't look like the eel. It wasn't as long. But uh, one of them swears that they saw like a big fish swimming in the water uh, as well of the river. What in the hell has happened to this place? Well, if we really want to talk, if we really want to talk about that, we know the answer. Yeah, we know the answer, but it's changed this drastically since we were here last. That was. For you, that was at least two years ago. Yes. Maddie, I want to scry on that big fish that I've heard about. Um. I don't know if it would register because you. It's. You, you weren't given like a very good description. Just people are saying, oh yeah, there's a big fish. It looked like maybe a fish shape in the water. Uh, okay. It, th there's no so re there's no reported attacks. Just people think that they see something big and fish-like in the water. Oh, okay. The eels so it's have not been a... attacking though. Yeah, I don't want to scry on those. I know what those look like. So it's it's just a not a it's a fish story then. It's not not a not a credible description. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if if I get a more credible description, I want to scry on it. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, stray blimps. <laughs> yeah, there might be some stray blimps here and there, just kind of floating through, uh, you know, meowing or doing their thing. What if I try to locate the big fish? Uh, do you need any sort of... I mean, if you're looking for a big fish, then, I mean, mm -hmm. a big fish will show up. I mean, that you're on a river, but... It's, it's a scriber name a specific kind of beast or plant. Mm, there's no specificities. Okay. Yeah. Same problem I have, I think. Not a good enough description, just a large shape. Okay. Uh, so well, if it attacks us, I won't need to scry on it. That's true. <laughs> Keeping my eyes out, though. Because it'll be right there. Uh, well, the sun does set. Uh, frost is forming. Uh, it is cold, but rather calm on the river. Uh, again, you pass by some people, uh, passing along advice. Watch out, the eels uh, aren't what they are, and they're attacking people. Um, and uh, and just uh, some passing river talk as well, or just a, a simple greeting as people are going uh, up and down the river. Do we have time for a short rest? Oh, yeah. Yep, you have a short yes, rest. Yes, please. I, I want a short rest. Yes. I want hit dice. <laughs> I'm at full health. Yeah. I thought Mordecai could use some recovery. Oh, Mordecai. Oh, wow. Mordecai is hot and cold. I'll pick up a couple of spell slots, too, while we're resting. Minimum, maximum, almost maximum, minimum, maximum, maximum. Um, I have enough spell slots. I should save my sorcery points. No, I'll take my head. I'll take my curse back, back okay. and um, grab my spell slots. I have no sixth level arcanum, but that's all right. Okay, the river, uh, the river does begin to widen, and it is getting a little bit busier as you are getting closer to Old Port. Uh, we are deep into the night. Uh, I don't know um, if any of you want to just... sleep, or if all of you are up because you're. You don't want to be attacked. I don't want just to be attacked. A, just as a question, that thing that that we killed, is it a humanoid? No. Okay. It has a humanoid shape, but it is not mechanically humanoid. Okay. No, I just need to check that. As we start to get closer to the city, Mordecai starts to get more and more nervous. I don't think he could sleep if he, even if he wanted to right now. Yeah. So here's the thing, Betty. Um, mm -hmm. It was a lo we've had a long rest since the last time I tried to scry on Mordecai's mother, right? Yes. Can I try to do that again for him? Sure. I thought it was my father we couldn't find. Yeah. No, we found him. Wait, no, no, oh. he was. Uh, yeah, he was talking with. Uh, uh, he was talking with people about uh, Operation Welcome Mat. 
Yeah, your mom couldn't be found, I think. No, we found the mom. We couldn't find the dad. Oh, well then who's who's doing My that? My mom. Then? Mordecai's mom was like sleeping with somebody else in their bed. Oh, right, right, right. I had it confused with with Jaden's parents. It was Jaden's father that I found. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, I want to I want to do the thing while we're having a little bit of mini downtime. Okay. Uh. What did we do for this? Cause it, it was described. Yeah, I think but we it, just it gave wasn't it first to... hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mordecai would again give you his description if you'd ask if you asked him. Yeah, I mean we have it from before. I, mm -hmm. I don't think the modifier is gonna change. No, I'm just trying to remember what it was I, I rolled in that regard. Um I wanna say it was a pretty high roll, so it might have just been you don't know the target well. But, uh, that's just a good description. I'll just roll it straight up here. Um, I think that was the modifier I used. All right. Um, Your father, oh, what was your father's profession again? Uh, I think he was in he real was estate. A, a what? I think he's in real estate. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm thinking of uh, of Jade's father too, like being a merchant of some. Or no, no, uh, he was a former cop. Uh, someone, I have a memory from when you first started doing all the scrying that someone was in a trade or was uh, was in like a, a business guild, I think. Uh, that was his mentor, his uh, tinkering mentor. Oh, from okay. Before. All right. He owns a shop in Old Ford. Last last Mordecai knew. Okay. Um. He is. As you're scrying on him, he is in a very well-appointed room. Uh, it's a bedroom of some kind that he's in, uh, sleeping. Um, he's alone in the bed, and uh, it just—it's a—it's not—it's not, it's not uh, like an inn. It doesn't have that kind of feel. Like yeah, it's all the samey decoration, kind of neutral, whatever. This actually looks like purposeful decoration. Uh, this looks like... Um, uh, th it just looks uh, like it would be from a very nice house. Very, uh, very mesomaskin in, uh, in appearance. Okay, so good news, he's okay. Even if uh, it doesn't look like... Doesn't look like he's doing much, but he's okay. He seems, you know, he's he's got all his body parts. Mm -hmm. Good, good. There's well, not enough good. for me to see where he might be, like if if he's in town or somewhere else. But, but he's definitely in Mesamasca. All right. Oh, this is going to be awkward. And you didn't get a sense of my mom being in Old Port? Uh, might be, they might not. I didn't really, couldn't really tell where she was either. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't look like the same place. It looks different, so they're probably not you know, together. But they're okay. I would have thought that they'd still be together. Doesn't seem like it. Yeah. 
something that's interesting. Well, at least they're alive. I know that. And maybe I can figure out where they are. Maybe. Yeah, we can always look into it when we get there. Because saying something like, hey, I'm alive, seems really inappropriate under asc over ascending. Incredibly inappropriate. Yeah, well, uh, can't answer that for you, but uh, maybe we can, maybe we can inquire when we get there. There might be, you know, what about what someone who would, place? what do you, do yeah, you I, have? if I've been there, if you've been there, yeah, damn, this is the place I've been, I wonder if it still exists. We'll find out. I guess so. We might have to just go there. Yeah. I remember where it was. Any other scrying you'd like to do as the barge continues its uh, slow, controlled uh, journey to Old Fort? Well. I know I blew my scry on uh, Loki last time, so let me try that again. Sure. Uh, uh, hocus pocus autofocus. And. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Loki does not show up on your scry. You want to try to find Mordecai? No, but I, I'll I'll take another shot at um, old what's her name, Grimhilder. Okay. <laughs> what's mean? <laughs> Mordecai was a chicken. Not a lie. You should get more. Yeah. Chicken. No. You can Mordecai get more was chicken. chicken. Mordecai yeah. was my chicken. And the any chicken about... that you purchase in the future will be your chicken. The thing about Mordecai is, it's really not very likely that Mordecai is still alive. No. Well, Yuri's still alive. Well, but Yuri's a magical snake. They live longer than chickens. So? I don't Mordecai know that Mordecai would have explained. Chicken. It's true. I don't know maybe. that he would have lived through an explosion. Fine, I'll scry on well, Mordecai. Well, but only really after really I do really Grimhilder. <laughs> It's not like it costs anything. It's just fine. I do more to collect, but after Grimhilder. All right. Uh, hocus pocus, autofocus. Grimhilder does not show up on your on your crystal ball. Okay. How about that? All right. Um, well, fine. I'll try and more to collect. <laughs> Since it's so important. It is. It's important no, to me. I really mean, not, I appreciate though. that, but I don't think more to collect is still alive. But we'll find out. Um, What's so important about this chicken anyway? You know she laid special eggs, right? She's not a normal chicken. She doesn't do that anymore. She did that when she was attached to that. my face. No, she did it afterwards. You ate some of them. <laughs> If anything, she's been repurposed and rehomed. If she's alive. Well, that would be nice to know, at least. Uh, Mordecluck cannot be found. <laughs> How did that? How? <laughs> How did the head of chicken survive this this cry? Uh, Bright, uh, maybe Mordecai is no longer, as Mordecai does not show up. You're you're pretty familiar with Mordecai. Yeah, but there's a green number showing in the dice tray. 
What? Oh, hang on. I gotta, let me click this off the stream so people can see that. <laughs> <laughs> what is so head empty? How? I'll check on Marduk again tomorrow just to be sure. <laughs> Mordecai's just gonna whisper into Bright's ear, just make something up. <laughs> if you don't find her again, just make something up. Make her happy. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> oh dear. Norelai, you were a sweet kid, and I love you to pieces. But sometimes you gotta let your pets go. Well, you wouldn't know anything about taking care of animals. Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. You didn't take care of a single animal this whole trip. I took care of plenty of animals while I was on the surface, thank you. Also, uh, well, not that attachment I saw. Phase. That, that should count for something. Well, she, you didn't feed her. She didn't need it. Yeah, and I fed her. She didn't need it when she was attached to my face. Well, you didn't feed her afterwards. I fed her. Because you wanted her. I gave yeah. her to you. Exactly. And I took care of her. You wanted her, because I didn't. That, that's what I'm saying. You haven't taken care of a single animal this whole trip. For the entire time I've known you. You haven't taken care of a single animal. I can think of six. And it's everyone who's ever been in Chroma Company. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just rude. You shouldn't call people animals. People are sometimes the peskiest animals. Let's be real honest here, Norlai. Well, there's difference because people can take care of themselves. And animals normally cannot. At least not when they're, you know, in cities and towns, you know. They have trouble. I heal all of you. I have sung you songs. I have done nearly every time that we've stayed at an inn have gotten us a discount. So who's not taking care of who? You're currently balancing the books too. Yeah. I take care of the finances of this party. Otherwise, we'd be spending money wastefully. I'm just gonna. No, I was just gonna pull oh. up one of her golden lines and just pet it <laughs> and stare at it for the past. <laughs> I give you an allowance because I know that you wouldn't be able to control yourself, honey. Mm hmm. I give you a place to sleep every night. I take care of everyone at this party, okay? I'm like party dad for some reason, because even though I'm not technically the oldest. Not by like 8,000 years, yeah. Bright's technically the oldest. How old are you now, Bright? Biologically or chronologically? <laughs> Both. Uh, biologically... Uh, I don't know. I've lost it. You're going to get like a Kingdom Hearts oh. expansion game answer on this. It's... Yeah, biologically 81, but, but chronologically 8,419. So yeah, 81 over 8,419 days. I could have swore you were over 100. I was, but that was before we reincarnated. I took about 30 years off, you know. <laughs> oh, so the because who, because who wouldn't? Mm. I didn't. <laughs> But I didn't want to revert 19 years. You know, being 32 and looking like I'm 32 is kind of advantageous. Yeah. Well, if you're 32, you shouldn't take 30 years off. Because then, mm, then you'd just no. be two. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about taking 10 off, because then I'd be, what, babyface? Babyface Mordecai? Jesus. I might be. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Then I look like the professor. The professor looks like he's baby face now. <laughs> professor, you're right here. What, do you have anything to say? I have not. You are too. You look younger than me now. 
Look a little closer. How um, how old is Mordecai? Thirty-two. Actually, yeah, he would look younger than Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai is very pretty, but he still looks his age. <laughs> So, so you do look the oldest of the party. Yes, I do. That's, that's I look like... like the party parent right now in our life. <laughs> yep, you have everyone out on the field trip, and I put all of your safety above mine. So, uh, as you're having this conversation, uh, the as the captain has retired to bed, it is the Gilligan who's steering the ship. I think we're about an hour away from Old Port, everyone. Fantastic. And while it's cold, actually, it probably gets a little bit colder even because the sky is crystal clear. Uh, you can see the the uh, the the moon, the stars, uh, those other stars that are moving, uh, those other stars that are moving, and uh, and looking ahead. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's some lights in the sky that are just sort of traveling in one direction or another. Mordecai starts to fidget with this with this the sunburst pendant on his neck. Okay. Just starts to fidget with it. Okay. Like he's nervous. So I'm not the only one who sees the dancing lights, right? No. You're not the okay. only one. Okay. It's That's weird. happened before. I wonder if those are airships. Oh, they could be. They're off in never the distance. Seen, never seen flying, like, moving stars like that before. Oh, wait. They wouldn't do you... me anything else, would they? Was it just bright in Norlai when the uh, the airships were uh, cruising at night when you were approaching uh, when you were approaching um, Mask of Horns? I don't remember that. I don't remember that either. I'll, I remember hiding from vampires. That's when and, uh, and making Bryson fly. That was fun. Uh, th that was the the first introduction of the the tanker style. Uh, though it was at it was at night, and I just described like a big dark shape with like just lights that just continued as it rolled past. Um, I think there was something like that with Casimir when they were riding two massive corns. From... Yeah, it was Casimir. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Norlai, that th you wouldn't have had experience with this. Nope. Uh, so yep, if you want it to be. If you want to call them dancing lights, you want to call them shooting stars or something, then yeah, there's little stars in the sky. Uh, and uh... We've seen shooting stars before. They move faster than that. Boy, Norlai, Mordecai just is it's a clear night, but he's raining on your parade. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can rain on me. I make sure of it. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful, cold night. Um... And you're noticing, uh, you are noticing uh, more, uh, more ships, in as the as the river uh, begins to widen a little bit more as it's uh, spreading out to flow out to the ocean, and uh, coming around uh, another bend here, there is actually a familiar sounding hum of uh, Shadahar airship engines. However, the ship itself is in the water. As it uh, seems to be just sort of going on like a, a very slow, uh, it'd be passing you to go upriver. Uh, it's not stopping uh, for anyone. I mean, it's not like barging over ships, but it's not, uh, they're not acting with any sort of direct purpose other than just sort of putting up river uh, in their ship. Do you want to lay low? Do you want to interact with them? Do you want to... Just play it cool. Play it cool. Okay. Play it cool. I have nothing to do with them. Okay. 
Same for the, the rest I'm of you three? I'm gonna practice my flute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep practicing. <laughs> You'll get better one day. I have a frustrating performance. No, we just please help her. It's your role performance. Hey, not too. Hey, it seems rather bad. Not, not too terrible. I mean, you know, you're, you're still. It's a solid. D's a passing grade, so it's a solid D, and uh, it may be edging on C. And you know, you're, you're getting into it, the timing and the rhythm, and just kind of learning because uh, your fingers extended when you grew up to be six feet tall, so you gotta have to like learn that as well. Um, okay. That, that also describes the key it was performed in. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, the, the large, well, I mean, large compared to the, the barge that you're on, uh, this is, uh, this would be something similar to the, the troop, uh, the troop moving, though this is probably, uh, an extended cab, as it has a similar build that, uh, you recognize from that style, but this would be, instead of, like, a patrol, maybe, like, 40 people that are kind of sardined in. Uh, this would probably be closer to a hundred tops. Um, but it's just, it's humming through the water. It has that, that unmistakable, even haunting sound coming from its engines. Uh, as it's just, it's making its way past. Which makes Mordecai all the more nervous because he doesn't like that sound anymore. I didn't like that sound at all. Uh, Gilligan simply looks up, Ahoy there! And waves as he continues to pilot the barge downriver. And someone, a, a soldier up on the ship, uh, Ahoy! And just continues to go back to watching. That passes. So do a couple more ships. Looks like there's uh, another uh, another set of logs that has already reached one of the milling uh, dock areas or like the collection areas. And ahead of you, in the cold, cold, clear dark of night, is Old Port. However, Old Port is not quite as you remember it, Mordecai. No, I didn't think it would be. There are many airships in the sky above Old Port. And now, even traditional, like, floating ships, not like air floating ships, but on water. Like, So this would be Shadahar Navy proper, not an airship navy. This is their design for water ships. Just as kind of metallic and bulky. As, uh, well, not quite, because the airships do have some other things, but y you get that aesthetic. Dark, dark colors, but it does have red as well. Um, very sturdy looking, very solid, cold looking ships. And as you're drifting through all of the docks, getting to a place where this barge can let you off, and along with, uh, along with Pouty's cargo... Um, one second. Gaspard must be having a field day. Uh, the city is a lot busier, even at night. Uh, there weren't clouds to reflect a lot of the light from this place. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, street lamps. There are a lot of uh, houses and towers. As you can see, where there is the old-style architecture, there's also new additions that have been built on that have that same Shedahar aesthetic. 
Uh, so in a sense, it's almost like it's it uh, the Shadowhar themselves are almost like subsuming or consuming the architecture and the places here. Um, there is a, a docking area that seems to be exclusively for uh, Shadahar uh, naval ships. And, uh, and beside that is, as well, maybe, maybe this is where the, the military fortification is, there's a big open area, uh, which uh, was a, it was a, a more like run down, almost forgotten part of town. It looks like it had been leveled and it's been made into an airstrip or some sort of a place where you're seeing uh, ships of different sizes uh, come and go. Uh, some of them with military build. However, you're noticing a lot of things that might just be more like freighters, cargo ships, uh, trade ships and the like. About uh, oh, go ahead. how late in the evening? About how late in the evening is it? Uh, we're gonna say that you arrive at uh one a.m. plus. Oh, you're here at two a.m. Should we find some place to lodge up then? Well, it's certainly an interesting coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is new. Well, it sure has, sure has changed. Well, I expected something to change. I do like the stylish thing floating in the air. That's that's amusing. I wonder. I wonder if they have rock gnomes working here, fixing and building these things. I wouldn't be surprised of it, actually. Gaspard was... was a very prominent tinkerer back when I was studying under him. I mean, the reason he, the reason he even took me on in the first place was because he needed the extra hands. Well, let's mm. let's Old find a place. Quaint, but uh, he definitely saw the idea, the ideal of technology. Yeah. I wonder if they even have a tumbled winch, or if we have to stay at the stupid wild cherry. Doesn't hurt to go find out. Let's go find out. I'll lead you to where I think the city center is, where I think the tumbled winch would have been. Ten years ago? <laughs> Twelve years ago? I mean, the city center is probably still in the center of the city. Well, it might not be geographically in the exact same location. <laughs> well, then it's not a very good name, is it? <laughs> oh, last place I left it, I suppose. If the city's gotten bigger. Okay. Let's go find out. Let's go find out. All right, so you are uh, you are docking. Uh, the the captain is woken up. Uh, he tells you that uh, you've made it here uh, safe and sound. He does thank you for uh, what you did back on the river, and he will be uh, he will be here for at least three days to either find cargo to take back up river, or he says that if you want a trip again, uh, that he can take you back up river and he'll give you priority because uh, mm. he owes you a, a steady for what you did. Um, okay. As well, Appreciate it. he can put in a good word for you with the other captains uh, and other people here in port if you if you want him to. That'd yes. be fantastic. Yeah. Tell, us, tell them about the Chroma Company. I will, and all the miracles you performed. Parting the <laughs> skies, bringing a man back from the brink of death. I'm only utilizing what we just gave me. Uh, all the more reason to have a, a, a pious holy man uh, that I have been able to transport downriver with no problems. 
yeah, it sure is great to have have a really powerful holy man, especially if you're someone who knows absolutely no magic whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you have uh, you have three days before I uh, I look to uh, to book my own passage back up river to Lake Right Eye. Uh, the ships must the ships must continue. It has to pay for itself. Understood. And well, uh, good luck. Oh, thank you, and to you as well. Uh, if anything, perhaps you all have been a boon uh, and have brought me great luck. I I didn't die. Uh, and uh, now I've been able to rub elbows with the very famous Chroma Company. He's, he kind of says around loudly at the dock in case anyone is, is listening. Yeah. You know what's going on. Yep, right aboard this ship here. Yeah, the very famous, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Mordecai slept on this barge. Everyone, the Mordecai. Great. So, um... I'm sure you and Pouty Lips can work out the salvage things. I'm not 100% an expert in in Mesomascan law, but it, it seems like the, the ship ought to belong to us because we're the ones that actually went and salvaged it, but I'm not sure we really need a barge. So maybe... I don't think it should belong to Pouty Lips. That doesn't, that doesn't seem fair because he was just a passenger. I mean, if we own it, we can sell it. It's true. Can Come we on. sell it? I'll... Uh, I'll leave that to Mordecai. He's the treasurer. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. How well, much do you reckon if, a barge like that would be worth? See if it's even worth our time. Uh, if you're wanting to stick to the law, it will take some time to make sure that the derelict is registered and uh, properly, and that the ownership does in fact go to you. Uh, that the captain is. Not in fact, or that captain and or owner is uh, not in fact dead or missing. It'd kind of be a shame to sell a barge and then maybe he strolls into town two days later and doesn't have it anymore. I mean, that one doesn't sound like it would be my problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brett, I need you to roll an alignment check, please. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so far as we can gather, there was no one else aboard the ship, so... Chaotic oh, no. evil. Chaotic evil. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> you heard it here from the first, folks. <laughs> We don't need it, so we'd be looking to sell it if we actually was if it actually was in our possession. Uh, if you are look, if you just want to sell it, uh, I mean, I could probably find someone to sell it to. Uh, but. We, came, we went through all the trouble to bring it here, so. Yeah. You want to buy it off of me? <laughs> um, or you could just you could just sell him the rights to it. If the, if it turns out that it's salvage, and like we get a, a a recovery fee, then that, or maybe you get the whole barge because the, there's no owner or whatever. Just take the whole thing off our hands. For, for, for a sum. Mm. Uh, look, I, I'd with like it. to, but honestly, that's that's not necessarily my business. I'm I'm more of the pleasure cruise captain. I I don't I don't know what I do with a barge. <coughs> and uh, his Gilligan says, "Well, oh, I know what I do. I push it up or down river all day. Maybe go fishing. Or sit out under the under the sun." Yeah, but you need a captain. Are you the captain, I think? In this particular scenario, we're entertaining, I, I believe I'd be the captain. And the captain looks over... With... What? With what money? 
I I know what I pay you. Uh, yes, that's true, Captain. But you don't know what I spend it on. <laughs> 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 you, you just give me a boat. Are you offering to sell a barge? I'm offering to sell a barge. Are you willing to buy? Chaotic evil. Uh, I suppose I uh, could be. How much do you want for it? Chaotic evil. 50 gold. This is your 50 gold. Uh, she is a one. A two. <laughs> Uh, what? Oh, the Fickle God might have something to say. Uh, Phantos <laughs> playing the role of Fickle God, what do you want to happen with that? Chaotic evil. I mean... Four, five... <laughs> and I think we divisify that by a couple. Uh, so that would be another five. And How about five? Five is fine. I got it for free. So, you, I you... mean, we could probably make more money, though. Uh, we, not that we're hurting for it, Norlai. We just need to get rid of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, why not, like, a thousand? I could buy another set of lions. I could, we can already get you an allowance for whatever you want. Hey, well, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, you all... you know, I'm not sure if you're the best at managing clomp, money. Clomp, clomp. And... Uh, the, uh, the Gilligan of the ship here, uh, you just hear, clomp, clonk, clomp, and, uh, he comes back up, and he has the other half of the barrel with almost a comical cork shoved in a hole, uh, and it, you hear a lot of jingling in this other half of a barrel. I think I, I have 50 in here for you. Hold on a moment. And the captain looks, where were you keeping that? Well, I, I kept my dirty laundry on top so you wouldn't rummage through it, captain. <laughs> <laughs> Clever boy. <laughs> Maybe he's smarter than he looks. <laughs> Maybe. Is this half of the barrel named Henry? Oh, that's good card. That's a good name, Henry Lizer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I like that. Henry, you're doing a good job. Well, I bet he holds 11 11 coins plus some. Mordecai's chaotic nature is starting to show. He's very, very tempted to just say, I'll just take it all. I mean, you're, he's, he's he sets down he sets down the... Henry the half barrel with the comical cork sticking out of a hole, and uh, and he begins uh, putting little piles of five at a time of uh, gold coins from it. There's, Going to be nice. There's five. Here we go more. I can go higher than five. I can go another five. There's your six, seven. Ten. That's a funny number. Have you ever stopped to think it has a one and a zero, but it's more than that combined? We have lodging to find, so. Well, tell me how much you want. I, I can be your captain. I'll count this for you right now, or at least by the time morning comes, I'll have a count it out for you. You know what? I'll wait till morning. Okay. 50 coins? Mm-hmm. Captain says, well, if you're going to buy your own ship, then you can count off mine. Oh. Well, can I count up to 49, then take my stuff off and get to 50 on the dock? No. <sighs> Just... You know what? As a favor to them, you can count aboard the ship. Thank you. I'll still spread the tale of the Chroma Company, was it? Yes? Okay. Yes. Um. Hang on one second. <laughs> Alright. I was just finding the Simba. Um. 
And you walk off through the ports as uh, as Gilligan here continues to count out gold coins from Henry the Half Barrel. I'm purposefully leading them through a route to where I believe that Gaspard's shop used to be. And I'm trying to see if I find it and if it's there. Not really pointing it out yet, if I find it. Okay. But is it there where I left it? Uh... Before you get to where you think it is, to provide mm. a little... Now that you're at street level, just to provide a little bit more atmosphere. Mm. Um, you still have... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, real quick. Uh, before you all leave, uh, as the money's being counted out and that's resolved, uh, the captain gives you a reminder. Um, just so you know, I, I didn't hear you talk about it, but uh, uh, I do you have masks. Uh, that is something that is still required while you're walking around in the city. I do. Uh, I would be neglecting my captain's duty to not remind you all to put those on after disembarking. Do you guys not have masks? Since... Coming out of hell... I don't know. I don't think it appeared in all of my stuff. Well... Uh, you can, I mean, you, you probably didn't say that to him, but he'll just continue. Uh, remember, in the ports, you can operate without them. Uh, and I'll tell you, even the Shadowhar have taken to wearing them. They think that it's fun and quaint. They have some interesting designs. That said, there's several mask shops within the port district that you can buy a mask from uh, before are you are to uh, set out into the city. Are they open this late? Oh, yes. Uh, especially uh, over the past two years. Uh, this place has been non-stop. There are ships coming and going at all hours. Hmm. And it's a good business, especially with all the Shadowheart who come in and they've never really thought to wear masks before. They find it to be a novelty. Novelty. This is... Cy Cypher, at the moment, just has a smirk on his face. Hmm. And... He, he kind of... He just spazzes it's like... I can't, uh, I can't fault you, but I prepared for this eventuality. And from his helm, this, there is a ornately decorated faceplate that slides over his face and would act like a mask. <laughs> I just have masks in my disguise kit. Uh, Bright and Mordecai, do you need to go shopping? I think I need a new one. Okay. And is Bright using magical or mundane means to hide her face? Oh, I was muted. Yeah, um, I, I could use magical means, but maybe I should just get a new mask. Probably be easier in the long run. Okay. <clears throat> Wouldn't require any spells or any concentration of any kind. <laughs> Well, my disguise spells don't need concentration, which is good, but yeah. it'll just... I mean, I would rather spend a couple of silver pieces just to have, save a spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you go to uh, you go to uh, one of the shops, and uh, in, on, in all honesty, between uh, how busy and uh, in, uh, in all the trade going on, there is a wide variety. Uh, in fact, uh, so much that you could even perhaps find a magical mask. You can also find very ornate ones that would flaunt wealth. Uh, there are very, you know, you just want a very basic, you know, that covers the eyes, like black, or like a traditional masquerade with uh, the handle, um, things with uh, silks and other materials. I will say as well, Bright, and this seems to back up what uh, Pouty Lips was doing, uh, as well as the fact that the Shadahar are, are quite literally buying up the culture of this place. There's a lot of, uh, while the masks weren't required in Ukt, there are gnomes that did travel with masks to, you know, follow the culture. And there are gnomish-sized, or and or halfling-sized masks, but especially ones that have an Uktan uh, flair, uh, a, you know, a coloration, a particular design, um, something no, along I those lines. 
I don't want an Octon mask. I want an Alfeshni. Uh, oh, yeah, an, Alfesh an Alfeshni mask? Yeah. Alright, so one with like a bunch of horns and maybe like two little bat wings on the corners where they would kind of go on the corner of your eyes or something? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... Yeah, you might have something like super decorative along those lines. Uh, just a just like a normal decorative one, nothing like magical, right? What would the magic be? Uh, th probably some low level spells on there for you know enhancing one's uh, you like know, beauty or, or, or talkative or things that might uh, give special effects like uh, like a dancing lights or it might glow in the dark or something or mm -hmm. grant you dark vision or you know. Some low-level stuff like that. Well, I don't know if, that you would wear a Nelfeshni mask for beauty. <laughs> that doesn't. That doesn't seem like. No, I, that would it, go it would definitely be like you'd stand out. No one would really have that design, I guess. Uh, it, maybe you'd have to actually have them uh, make it custom. But there's plenty of custom mask makers around too. No, I just run a regular old Nelfeshni. It'll remind me of home, I guess. Okay. So mundane materials, but you want it to, to have little horns and wings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure, something like that can be custom tailored if, if you're willing to hang out in the uh, in the port district. They have a very like a, a basic uh, color mask that you're looking for, and the uh, the craftsman will tell you that uh, if you can give him about an hour and a half or two hours, uh, he can certainly have it uh, ready for you. Yeah, I'm sure I can do that. Maybe I should pick it up in the morning. Yeah, uh, he'll remind you if you go out. Make sure you you cover your face, though. Yeah, uh, that's okay. I can do that. All right, and uh, and the shopkeep looks over you, Morde uh, to Mordecai. Uh, and what can I interest you in? Do you want a, a custom mask? Do you want uh, something more top shelf? Do you want uh, just something that will get the job done? This is a, a, a another tiefling talking to you. Mm hmm. Um. What kind of mask would Mordecai want at this point? If you want something a little exotic, I do have Shadahari themed masks. Mm. No, I want something very, very old port. Hmm. Something nice. Not flashy, but nice. Well, yes, flashy. <laughs> All right. Uh, he he takes a look and uh, he asks if he can measure your horns. Not an uncommon, you know. Yeah, it's not uncommon. Uh, so he, he takes a string, oh, wow. makes some notes here. I think I might have something here that can work. Uh, just uh, higher grade materials. Or are you looking for anything that might uh, that might uh, have a, a little magical flair to it? Nothing that's going to really take a lot of, take a lot out of me to wear. Oh, lightweight. Yeah. Okay. Something, I mean, you're familiar with attunements, I'm sure. Nothing that's going to do that. Certainly. Uh, I, I am sure that I can, uh, I'm sure I have something. In fact, I already think I know. Yes, I, I see this, I see this. Um, and, uh, and he would, he would have some magical, uh, uh, craftsmanship himself here. So bright, like, uh, you, you could have designed it and he would have, uh, I mean, it's sort of like Build-A-Bear except with, you know, minor illusion. And, uh, he's like, is this what you're looking for? And you're like, yep, that's it's the one. It's build a boar. Build up, yeah, build a boar. <laughs> Make a mask. <laughs> Make a mask, yeah. <laughs> build a boar. <laughs> uh, Mordecai, the thing that he envisions for you is um, uh, it's enough that it would count as a mask, but it would almost be a veil. And what he would do mm. is he has uh, two little horn caps uh, that then uh, would go down in a. I can even, I'll minor illusion this right on screen. Uh, so we have your swept back horns. And what he would, 
And what he would do is he has something that would be like a little bell here. And then there is a little... They don't drill into your into your horns or anything, but they rest here with a little loop. Uh, although it might actually stick out a little bit further. And then... Uh, what would happen... Maybe we'll put two, because why not? This is fun in fantasy. Is we'd have a string that would come down here and here. And then you would have almost like a, a veil that would cover your face. Mm. And then uh, it would be weighted so that there's tension along your horns. Not heavy tension, but enough that it would keep your veil uh, over. And it would mask your face enough to certainly count. Uh, but then there'd be some sort of like a little charm or a weight at the end to keep it down. And so that the wind wouldn't Ooh. really catch it. So you yeah, have like this that. very Mask of Horns gaudy, overcomplicated uh, mask <laughs> device uh, that would be a veil over your face. Okay, yeah. And I if you need to, you can that. always lift the veil to eat or, you know, mm. whatever. You can you can offer mysterious eyes through the veil and uh, and whatnot, too, if you really wanted to. Does that sound good? Ooh. I'm a pr I, I can dig it. Uh, I can okay. dig it. Mordecai having a veil. Um... If you're willing to pay a little bit extra, I think I have just uh, just a fun little flair for it as well that this veil can offer you. Uh, this uh, it's something that uh, I mean we're already capable of doing, but uh, you wouldn't have to go out of your way for it. With a little bit of uh, a little bit of thaumaturgy uh, imbued into this veil, you can make your eyes glow any color you wish as long as the veil is over them. Hmm. I think, actually, uh, almost a white glow would look fabulous on you. Uh, framed by the dark blue hair you have, and just the whole uh, blue aesthetic. Something bright, it would just draw everyone's eyes in, or leering from behind the veil itself might look a little bit menacing if you're looking to get out of trouble. Would that suit you? It would cost a little extra, but it's something fun. Yeah. I can already do that, though. Yes, but you have to try and always keep Ooh. it on. This is... This would be what you would desire, and the veil would keep that until you turn it off or change it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, let's go with that. Excellent choice, sir. Uh... Uh, I'll make the arrangements. Uh, he'll, he'll give you a number. I don't have one offhand, but it's well within the current mm. wealth that you that you carry uh, for yeah. both uh, the sort of uh, make a mask uh, Nalfeshni and for the more magical, uh, you know, uh, that more mysterious veiled one. Um, and uh, and he'll make sure to uh, to quote you a uh, to quote you a price. Uh, and uh, uh, who should this order be under? Chroma Company. Oh, a business. Yes. If you don't mind my asking, I haven't heard of that business, though many are cropping up here as of uh, as of late. Uh, what is the Chroma Company's business? Entertainment. Ah, entertainment. All the more reason why this veil will be... Oh, extra special. Um, Sounds perfect. Are you playing someplace? We're looking for the tumbled wench. Oh yes. Well, uh, yeah. That is uh, gives you directions, and it's it's where it it's where you remember. Hmm. Uh, however, it has renovated perfect. lately. Uh, lately, it has expanded, uh, uh, updated some. Uh, it is still what it is, just well, more of it. Yeah, we're gonna get lodging there for. For a while, I think. For a little while, at least. Well, if you wanted to mix it up, there's other places I could recommend to you. Uh, if you're coming into town newly. Uh, though I, I seem to detect a hint of uh, uh, an old accent. Are you are you from here? Yes. Uh, it's been 12 years since I've been back. Oh, so much has changed. Well... 13 years? 
then that just a little bit extra more. I haven't been back since I was 19. Well. Well, you know us from Old Port. We are all very extra. <laughs> That's what I always loved about home. Uh, well, between uh, yours, uh, your your mask and hers, uh, yeah, if you wanted to come by by the morning, uh, I am... I know what I'm going to be doing all night. Pouring my heart and soul into these projects. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Oh, well then, off with you. Off to the wench. They did have, uh, from what I last heard... Uh, they did add some very nice rooms that uh, might be worth your uh, losing a little extra weight in your pocketbook, um, depending on the type of elbows you want to rub. Or and he looks down. Any at the elbows right, we should. Or rub. the boots you wish to knock. <laughs> he says that in <laughs> Infernal, though, hoping she doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, you went into the mask store too? I thought you had a mask. I guess I, you don't I have to. I would have just stepped with a party. Okay. I'm not going to say anything about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are there any specific elbows we should rub? Well, uh, well certainly. Uh, uh, if you're looking for entertainment, uh, speak with the staff of the wench. They. Uh, they're constantly looking for acts. Uh, business has been booming, especially with our, uh, our newly arrived guests, uh, who are all the more numerous, and looking for uh, local custom and entertainment, uh, depending on what a type of entertainment you provide, um, be it a public variety or a private variety. Uh, they are very uh, hungry or thirsty for such entertainment. Uh, so yes, that would be a good place to start if that is what you'd like to do. There are some other places. Uh, there is a new establishment which uh, seems to rival uh, the Tumbled Wench, uh, though it is of a presumably Shadahari origin. Uh, it's a, a new franchise called the Wild Cherry. Uh, I hear that there are several of those that have been re that have been established over time. Uh, it's a very different mood. Uh, elegant, refined, somewhat somber, though there is still an entertainment capacity there, but it may not necessarily be as uh, raucous or cheery as a lot of the uh, the bards in the Tumbled Wench play. Mm. Uh, if you, Especially if you can, or if you're comfortable around uh, Shadahari audiences, then you could be successful there. good to keep in mind. Thank you for all of your work. Oh, don't say that until you wear it out. Then you can thank me later for all the eyes it may turn or turn away, depending on how you wish to present yourself with that veil. And... Can I buy, oh, yeah. while we're here, just a real simple mask? Just like a plain minimalist yeah, cheapest one. Yeah, uh, plain that black. I can... Plain black mask, yeah. one copper piece. Just yeah. One size fits to... most. Yeah, one size fits small. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mordecai's yeah. just... gonna do the same actually, and just put a gold piece down as the initial as payment for that. Cause I'm not keeping track of silvers and coppers. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, one plain black, almost like burglar mask, just like a little bloop, you know, right over the... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Love your ears. Here and then, go. yeah, Bright and Mordecai both get one of those each themselves. For in the meantime, till there's this... Yeah, until complete... the real ones are ready. Yep. All right. Uh, well, with masks in hand and a place to go... I think this is going to be a good place to break for the week. Uh, if y'all are good with that, it, we did hit three, so... A little I bit do have one time. more scry I want to do. Okay, one more scry? On whom? That stupid 
chartreuse tiefling that got away. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. And passing through town, does Mordecai see Gaspard's shop? Um. You would, to reach his shop, you'd have to go beyond the, uh, that central area where, uh, mm -hmm. the wench and the wild cherry are. Uh, not that you can't go there. There's no one's, like, there's not a curfew in force or anything, so you can keep walking if you want. Um. Mordecai probably would have purposely taken the long way around. Oh, all right, yeah, no one here knows any better. So, yeah, you can take the circuitous <laughs> route. <laughs> Um, Just to see if it's still around. Okay. Uh, yes, his shop is is around. It's closed. It also seems to be doing really well for itself. And you are noticing. Uh, you are noticing. Uh, maybe Bright had a little bit of a uh, an intuition or a a, 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 a divin vision, uh, as there is this kind of interesting. Uh, there's this kind of interesting slightly different take on the Shadahar metallic sculpture and uh, in, in this that it is a major part of his shop. Um, so it has expanded. It's taking up a lot more room now and it does give off this kind of uh, this kind of vibe where it's there it may be some sort of Shadahari basis or uh, like foundation, but it certainly has his flare or his vision placed atop it. Uh, and then Bright uh, is trying to scry and based on what was seen and what's going on, uh, your scrying uh, will not will not divulge anything. Okay. 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 Uh, Norlier, <laughs> Professor, any any other uh, last minute things you wanted to do before you retire to one of these places? No, I'm good. I have I have one more scry that I want to do. Okay. I want to scry the restaurant where we almost caught the chartreuse tiefling. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Um. Yeah, you're up there. It's uh. It is more familiar. Um. You, uh... There are guaranteed results I'm giving you, but for a bonus, make a perception as well. Okay. 21. Nice. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you, you scry back on the captain's quarters, um, uh, you know, especially in that, uh, that uh, upper place that's there. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, as your as your scrying eye is uh, boop, scanning around, uh, it is late. There are still people here because, of course, this is a place where you know uh, people are coming and going on and off ships. Uh, so it's not terribly busy. Uh, there seems to be someone uh, uh, dressed nicely, so presumably a captain, uh, that's kind of drunk and passed out with uh, the mug, just sort of out at the table like this. Um, there's uh, there's another. Uh, where someone maybe just sat down and is talking to one of the wait staff to order something. Uh, you think you can make out uh, silently something seaweed salad? Uh, it's hard to make out, but it's probably what it is. Uh, and then there's one other table uh, where there is uh, there's someone who's kicked back and is talking to no one. But there's all the gesticulations of a conversation going on 
Uh, there's even like uh, this this person is like laughing, like, sort of like a ha ha ha, leaning back, like boots up on the table, leaning back in the chair on two legs. Um, but uh, there's no one else at the table, uh, despite all the conversational presence of there being as such. And I do have true sight. Uh, that still won't matter, I don't think. Okay. Um, let me just make the sure. True sight lets you see invisible and see ethereal, right? Yeah, true sight you can see everything, but Matt, is immune to scrying. Yeah, if the if the creature is immune to divination magic, you probably can't see them. I'm not sure. I would I would have to investigate that as well. Because <laughs> there is like the non-detection spell and some other stuff. Uh, even your true sight is not revealing. Uh, okay. The other Can I eavesdrop on the at least the half of the conversation? Um. Yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, it is in infernal, and uh, though the other person talking is human. Uh, and he, he's pretty pretty good uh, infernal, probably uh, works with a lot of tieflings. Um, yeah. Fortunately, I know that now. Yeah. I learned it from a Nalfeshni. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wanted a Nalfeshni mask. Uh, the part that you catch uh, is... Uh, um, really? And... It was just as easy as that? Well, of course, not easy, easy. Uh, really? Huh. I'll have to look into that. That's why you... Alright. I, I, I just thought maybe you were paranoid someone was trying to poison your drink. <laughs> no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you mind? And the person leans forward and grabs onto something. Uh, actually, if it's a part of the person. Yeah, just grabs onto something and uh, almost looks like they're, they're going to go take a drink, but then raises it up a little higher and very kind of casually... Just kind of like looks around and then stops because this person looks up and seemingly catches your sensor. Puts it back down. Is there supposed to be a. like an eye? <laughs> And suddenly the person, like, falls back in their seat as, uh, the, th like, then the hands open up. Presumably it was, uh, it was taken. Uh, one of the chairs falls over, and other people around, like, the, the except for the sleepy drunk, uh, the person who just ordered, uh, just sort of, like, looks oh. as nothing runs past. Okay. I want to get a real good look at this person that I was able to see. Okay. Yep, you can you, you can spend time doing so. Okay. Do they? I mean, you you mentioned they were human and and well dressed, right? Any yeah. other distinguishing features? Uh, yeah, because uh, this would be a captain of a ship. There's probably some sort of uniform with, you know, markings or uh, a particular coloration. Okay. All right. That's good. Good to know. I'm going to be keeping track of this guy, at least. He's a good lead. <laughs> I didn't give up on that guy, even though he gave us the slip. Alright, that's all. I don't need to do any more scrying for now. Okay. Uh, so then... Uh, you can go to the the more home-style feeling, uh, though, though bigger and expanded, uh, tumbled wench? Or would you rather stay at the more... Uh, sophisticated, low-key, more of that kind of dark, like, wine red and sable black, uh, gothic-style look of the wild cherry. And well, I think... 
Any town that's a town has a tub of wench, and that's the place to be. That's true. That's what I'm saying. I think the tumbled wench is way more fun. I mean, I dropped bullies into manure last time. Yep. <laughs> uh, but all right. Maybe the professor has a reason why we would want to stay at the Wild Cherry. I mean, the professor I mean, can I if he wants to. I don't see any major reason to stay stay at the Wild Cherry specifically right now. Okay. It 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 just oozes Shadowhar though. I mean, it's just. You don't want to rub elbows with Shadahari before you go to bed, Mr. Cypherius. I mean, I could, but... I mean... I'll probably end up going over there, not because... Not because... Not just to rub arms to Shadahari, but more to... You know, maybe we might get some more leads there as well. All right. Well, with the plan in mind, uh, you you can get a at least most of you can get a room, or all of you can, and one of you just visits. But because uh, they're almost across the plaza from each other, so it's not too far. Uh, but yeah, you'll make arrangements at the uh, tumbled wench uh, with your mask order pickup in the morning, and I think it's here. We're gonna call it a night, and then we're gonna go give Derek. Who, wow. Oh my gosh, he has done a ton. In the time that we've been sitting here playing D and D, this man's gone to work. Um, let's go raid Macabre Derek, everyone, so you all can get another uh, another glimpse of what all is happening uh, with the, this version of the Chroma Company. And uh, you know, he's coloring in uh, a horn on Mordecai here. So yeah, uh, David, thank you for joining us. Thantos, uh, your request will be taken into consideration, and I will. Uh, enact it in this coming week's uh, version of what's going to happen this time. I mean, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and uh, for all of you out there, uh, as my players and as audience members here, uh, looks like even Derek's been hanging out a little bit. Uh, I missed a comment of his. Raven, uh, let's see, Thantos, Willis, uh, Reptile Room, uh, Cherries. Uh, which, if they go there, you're, if I didn't tell you, you're gonna love the uh, you're gonna love the pronunciation of the wild cherry. If you ever hear a uh, Shadowhar speak the common tongue, um, yeah. So we're gonna go raid Derek. Uh, go visit uh, the Chroma Company with the Chroma Company. Uh, it's very meta, and I'll be back tomorrow for some workshopping. I owe you an owl person character and a rabbit person character. So we'll do some more uh, Fae-inspired uh, race character creation. Um, and, uh, oh, and Quingar, howdy. Uh, howdy and bidey to you uh, as we're going to take off to go visit Derek. Uh, you all know how you can get a hold of me on Discord if you need anything. And uh, uh, Lethality, you're going to go live with the Gathering of Nerds in an hour or so? Uh, about two hours. And, yes, the Nerds will be going live. Okay. Me though, me though, I'm I'm going to be taking a break tonight to get some ch some other behind the scenes channel stuff done because I have a just a batch of videos to upload to the vault archive. Uh, then. Uh... Yeah, who else needs to do that? <laughs> oh, what what's that? Maddie. Shh. Oh, we're uh, Derek's <laughs> channel's taking over. Shh. I can't hold on to the signal much longer. Ah, <laughs> <raid>. <laughs> oh no, we raided Derek. I didn't. Oh no. 